Bits on their own have no real value. Bits are just ones or noughts, positive or negative charges, and they just flow around your computer. But they are not on their own. If it was just a bit on its own, it would be completely useless to you. The reason why we have the grouping of bits is so that when we group these bits together, they can represent base 10 numbers. Now this might sound quite strange, but I want you to think of your calculator. Your calculator, the bit that you are interacting with, the buttons you are pressing and the screen you are looking at, prints out numbers that are in the base 10 realm. But this is quite strange. How come you can add two base 10 numbers, such as 999 plus 888, and somehow your calculator, which is a computer, which works with base 2 on the hardware level, can add those numbers together and print out a number on the screen that is in fact base 10. And the only reason why we can do that is when we group the bits together, group the ones and noughts together. Now back in the heyday we used to have let's say the Atari 8-bit, that's a very old computer, and it was only able to process at one time eight bits, eight ones and noughts at one single time. Then it got better, we got 16-bit. So now your computer can process 16 ones and noughts at one time. And then it went up again and doubled and went to 32-bit. Many people have heard of 32-bit operating systems. It means that your operating system and your hardware can process 32 ones and noughts at a single point in time. And then we doubled it again and now you have 64-bit operating systems, which means now we can work with 64 ones and noughts at one single point in time. Now if you look at these, these are all factors of 8. 8 bit, then you've got 16 bit, which is two eights, then you've got 24 bit, 32 bit, and so forth. So if you want to look at it, 32 and 64, they're all factors of 8. Now take for example an 8 bit calculator. An 8 bit calculator can store 8 digits at any one time. So let's take a look at this. I have my 8-bit calculator and I type in 125. Now the keypad and the screen is showing a base 10 number, 125. But what does that actually look like in memory? Well, in memory, it actually looks like 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Now, I'm not interested right now in how we've come to this result, but you can see there are eight ones and noughts there, and that is a base two number. It is a number only consisting of two digits, zero or one. Now, this binary number, you can call it a base two number, you could call it a binary number, you could also call it binary data. You can give it any one of those names, it's not wrong. So please, when you see these ones and noughts, remember binary data, binary number, or just a base two number, or you could put it in the most literal terms, which is, it's just a number consisting of zeros and ones. So that base two number actually represents in memory our base 10 number, 125. Now I'm gonna stop there because I want you to soak this in. We have eight bits. When you couple eight bits together, we call them one byte, it makes it easier. And what we are doing when we are increasing processing power, as computers have evolved, all we're doing is we're able to work with more ones and zeros. We went from working with eight to 16 to 32, and now 64 ones and noughts. There's more processing happening, therefore there is more processing power. So that is what we're talking about there. So remember, 8 bits, 1 byte, base 2, binary data, or binary number, whatever you want to call it, is a number consisting of zeros and ones, and they can represent base 10 numbers, such as 125. But in memory, it looks like ones and noughts, or positive and negative charges. Now, in the next lecture, we're actually going to take a look at calculating 
how we get 0111101 from 125.